when you got MS, I went to the library, and they have got the goofiest darn theory. Uh, it's really hard to really understand how they got such a goofy theory. Historically, and I hope we do that documentary, it's got something to do with rabies. That because they figured out that rabies was a virus, they went off on this wild goose hunt that maybe it's like rabies. It's some kind of a autoimmune viral thing. But it just didn't make any darn sense. Here's what I think. And uh, Paolo and I are going to do a paper on this. In fact, I just finished writing it. I'm going to send it to him tonight. Basically, Paolo has convinced me that chronic venous inflammation, insufficiency, is really the same whether it's in the legs or in the brain. You get bad valves, you get poor flow, you get uh, white cells and inflammation accumulating on the edges of the valves and the vein, that some of those white cells uh, get out of the vein and into the surrounding tissue. Along with that you get uh, red cells accumulating and they get out of the t out of the vein and so you end up with uh, white cells and iron in the uh, tissue around the vein and that's bad enough in the legs it's cosmetically so bad that it's a big booming business probably a bigger business than MS is the cosmetic leg treatment is probably bigger business than MS uh, but the same thing's happening in the brain the uh, little tiny smallest veins called venules are uh, are getting uh, sludgy because of uh, poor flow out of the neck and the and the spine uh, that uh, red cells and iron is uh, getting across the vein wall and into the surrounding tissue and what's the surrounding tissue it's oligodendrocytes, which are incredibly sensitive to iron. So this, this iron is killing off the oligodendrocytes. The oligodendrocytes are uh, uh, dying, and the myelin that they make is shedding. Then the immune system comes in to clean up the myelin, to scavenge or phagocytize, phagocytize the myelin. It's not that the white cells are attacking myelin. It's that the white cells are coming in to clean out the mess caused by uh, poor flow, hypoperfusion, hypoperfusion, uh, and uh, that's what MS is. So MS needs to be treated by first diagnosing hypoperfusion. Uh, there have only been about five or six studies on perfusion in MS. All of them have shown poor perfusion. Uh, so then the treatment has to be how to improve perfusion and how to decrease, prevent and decrease iron accumulation. That's how we're going to be treating MS in the future. We're only going to use immunosuppressants, so-called uh, uh, disease-modifying drugs, if we can't succeed in improving perfusion and decreasing iron, if we can't stop the attacks of inflammation, fine, we can use immunosuppressants. We should stop calling them disease-modifying drugs. They're immunosuppressants. And we should only use them if we failed at increasing perfusion and uh, decreasing uh, iron accumulation. So how do we go about doing that? Uh, I think we've made really great progress. The big problem right now is that because insurance companies are unwilling to pay for these radical theories of treatment. They're willing to pay $40,000 a year in these drugs which are only marginally effective, but they're not willing to pay for either diagnosis or treatment of possible uh, venous insufficiency problems. So the patients are having to pay out of their own pocket. So that's not right. That's not fair. The insurance companies aren't going to pay. The MS societies aren't willing to pay. The NIH is not willing to pay. Uh, Big Pharma, the drug companies are not willing to pay. So patients are having to pay way too much to have it themselves. Uh, that's what's got to change. And the way, only way I can see that changing is if we can get uh, 
fundraising. Hey, hey, Charlie. If we can get fundraising, it doesn't take a lot of money. I think for probably two or five million dollars, there'd be enough money that everybody could be treated, could be tested for free. Now, if they're uh, found to have poor perfusion and poor venous drainage, well, then they're going to have to have uh, uh, treatment by vascular surgeons or interventional radiologists. But at that point, that will get paid for. Once it's proven they have it, they'll get their money. But the research piece of it, being able to show that there's poor perfusion, uh, that it can be changed with, with treatment, uh, that's the part that's, got to, that's going to have to be funded by research. And that research is unfortunately going to have to be paid for by friends and families of MS patients. Not the MS patients themselves, they can't afford it. And not these other outfits, MS societies, drug companies, NIH, neurologists, they're not certainly gonna pay for it. So that's really the challenge ahead. So at this point, I think we have a, we have a clear path toward an answer to a biomarker for MS. Uh, what we don't have a clear path for yet is how to raise enough money couple of million dollars, not a lot of money, so that people can get this testing uh, done at no cost. Uh, and that's basically uh, what, what uh, the Hubbard Foundation is, is focused on at this point.